Hi everyone, welcome back to The Early Show with me, Pastor Jinai, with a new format and a new schedule for this show. So, as I announced in the previous episode, these videos are no longer going to be released on a weekly basis, but will be released instead on the first and third Sunday of every month. We're going to be focusing on answering your questions, and the idea is to give you guys a little more content to digest, as well as a little more time to digest it. So, I hope that this works out better for you. As I said before, the aim is to produce better, more helpful videos for you guys. So, if there's a topic that you would like me to cover or question that you would like me to answer, please do let me know and I'll get right on it. Now, before we get on to today's topic, I would like to thank the sponsors of today's sharing. We have two sponsors for today, someone who wishes to remain anonymous as well as Chumbuni. The anonymous sponsor would like to dedicate their contribution towards all beings liberation from suffering and attainment of compassion, wisdom and true happiness. And Chumbuni would like to make the following dedication to their contribution that may all sentient beings be well and happy. So lately, I've been reading a lot of articles about burnout and how people are feeling burned out regarding of whatever age they're at. I wanted to talk about it because I think that what's been happening with the pandemic and everyone's routines being broken, with things constantly changing, and with people having to deal with so much uncertainty, that there has been a lot for us to cope with. And having to deal with it over and over again, having to deal with these high stress situations, people can get tired and people can get burned out. So how do we recognize the signs of burnout and how do we deal with it? First, what is burnout? Burnout happens when a person's environment is stressful. It's caused by work-related attributes such as our co-workers, our supervisor, or poor work culture. So, for example, when there's too much paperwork, when there's a lack of resources, when there are long shifts, that's when the risk of burnout increases. Now, since burnout is environment-related, it typically gets better when a person takes time away from the source. But it does take time to recover from burnout, and the recovery time is extended. There are three characteristics of burnout, and they are Number one, Exhaustion, which is a generalized fatigue that can be related to devoting a lot of time and effort to a task or project that is not perceived to be beneficial. Number two, cynicism or depersonalization, which can manifest as negative or callous behavior or interacting with others in an impersonal or unprofessional manner. And number three, reduced personal accomplishment or the feeling that you don't believe you can make a change. So, how does burnout manifest? There are some non-specific symptoms such as feeling frustrated, feeling anxious, feeling angry, or feeling fearful. Someone who is burned out may also express the inability to feel happiness, joy, pleasure, or contentment. What's more, burnout can also manifest as physical symptoms such as insomnia, muscle tension, headaches, and gastrointestinal problems. Some people deny that they're burned out because they think that it must only be for people who are in high-stress situations such as trauma doctors, lawyers, or war journalists. Or they think that it must only be for people in caring professions such as nurses, hospice workers, and so on. They think that they can't possibly be burned out because they're not in those industries, but that's not necessarily true. Burnout is about being worn out, and it can happen to anyone in any profession. When someone is burned out, things that inspire passion and drive and enthusiasm are removed. And these are taken over or replaced by tedious, unpleasant thoughts. Everyone relates to and handles stress differently, and everyone is different in how much stress they can handle. A person can be burned out so as long as they're responsible for something or someone, or they're responsible for a particular outcome. So the truth is that anyone can experience burnout. Now as Buddhists, it's important for us to recognize signs of burnout in ourselves and in others because we're on a spiritual path to develop certain attainments which might take us a while. And we want to be successful on that path. And being successful on that path means being sustainable in our practice. And so if burnout isn't addressed, we might quit, we might give up early, we might become demotivated and so on. And if burnout in someone else isn't recognized, then we may not be able to offer them the support and the help that they need. So the good news with burnout is that you are not alone. You're not the only one who has suffered from burnout. Even someone as magnificent as Jamrazik suffered from burnout. Yes, even the Buddha of Compassion suffered from burnout. And when we know the story of Jamrazik, we can take inspiration from it. In one of Jamrazik's many manifestations, he is depicted with 11 heads, a thousand arms, and an eye in the palm of each hand. And there is a story behind this depiction. It is said, that Jamrazik previously made a vow never to rest until he had freed all beings from samsara and that if he ever broke this vow or if he ever entertained selfish thoughts or if he ever had a selfish motivation that his head and his body would break into a thousand pieces and so Jamrazik worked for all sentient beings but despite his best efforts just as soon as Jamrazik had emptied the suffering realms of its inhabitants he looked around and he saw that it had already been repopulated so he was disheartened because it seemed as though nothing he had done had made a difference and it seemed like nothing had changed so it was at that point that Jamrazik thought that he was going to leave sentient beings to their fate. That there was no point in helping them because there was never going to be any end and so he might as well just enter Nirvana instead. And it was at that very moment, at that very point when he had that thought, 
that his head and his body exploded into a thousand pieces because he had broken his vow. Fortunately, Chenrezig's guru, the Buddha Amitabha, saw what was happening and he put Chenrezig back together again with all of his heads and all of his arms and all of those eyes so that he can see all sentient beings simultaneously and see exactly what they need and see exactly how he can help them. Now, when we know this story, it's an inspiration for us because Chenrezig is the Bodhisattva of compassion. He's not supposed to get burnt out. But before he became this supercharged Bodhisattva who can see all sentient beings simultaneously, he definitely had a burnout moment. He definitely got fed up, he definitely got frustrated, and he definitely entertained thoughts of giving up. So how do we deal with burnout and how do we improve our resilience? We deal with burnout and we improve our resilience by working to increase our good fuel and working to reduce our not so good fuel. Our Guru, His Eminence Sam Tuku Rinpoche, explained to us that when we wish to accomplish something, there is such a thing as good fuel and not so good fuel. Good fuel is bodhicitta. Good fuel is altruism. Good fuel is untiring, unceasing and unending. And good fuel is any act of service to any sentient being without expectation or return and without agenda, without any tinge or stain of selfishness. Not so good fuel is anger, jealousy, competition, fame, or the wish to do something because it makes you look good or because it's prestigious. So the first step to preventing or to dealing with burnout is working to increase our good fuel and working to reduce our not so good fuel. It's generating a good motivation over and over again. And that's why as Buddhists, it's so important for us to do our sadhana every single day and to take that moment to meditate on and to generate bodhicitta and to get into the habit of doing it over and over again. We can also deal with or prevent burnout by working on our expectations. What do I mean by this? Someone who suffers from burnout typically has an expectation for a particular outcome if they put in the required effort. So there is a gap between our perceived result and the expectations that we have for ourselves. So an example is the thought that if I care enough for this person, they will heal. If I do all of the right things and I make all of the right decisions, they will get better. If I say the right things, their situation will improve. If we have high expectations for every situation and it's combined with the denial that karma exists, it's a recipe for us to be disappointed over and over again. It's a recipe for us to get stressed because things don't go our way or things don't go the way that we've predicted. So we have to meditate and we have to think. Karma exists. I am subject to my karma. And as long as karma exists, and as long as I am samsara, I should learn to expect problems, that things will go wrong, that nothing will be perfect. I should learn to expect difficulties, that things are not perfect and things won't always go my way. And I should expect that work will be stressful at times, that if I put the effort in towards something, because I am in samsara, it may not necessarily be my karma for things to work out the way that I expect. So another way of dealing with and preventing burnout is by meditating on karma. Meditating on the fact that karma exists by studying and understanding the workings of karma. When we understand karma, then we can accept that difficulties will always exist, that things will never go the way that we expect. We can accept that difficult situations and stressful situations will always arise. Now, another way of dealing with or preventing burnout is by focusing out. Rinpoche always told us that if we want to be happy, focus out and focus on helping others. What do I mean by this? When we focus out and we focus more on what the person in front of us needs and we stop focusing so much on what we expect or what we hope to gain out of a situation and we stop focusing on our expected outcome, we're directing less energy and we're getting less caught up in our own selfish concerns and in our own pity. When we focus out on benefiting others, then all of the obstacles and all of the problems and all of the stress and all of the difficulties and so on that we come across immediately become more tolerable and become easier to handle. So as Rinpoche always says, how much you can tolerate is how much compassion you're practicing. Does this mean that we won't feel tired sometimes? Does this mean that we won't still get burned out sometimes? Of course we still will because we're still practicing. We're still not generous yet. So of course burnout will still happen. But so as long as we keep realigning our motivation again and again to focus out on benefiting others, over time we will find stressful situations easier to handle because we're handling it for something bigger, because we're handling it for someone else. It's all a matter of practice. And finally, another way of dealing with or preventing burnout is take a break. When you're starting to feel burnout, take a break. No one said that you can't take a break every once in a while. Even Rinpoche would send his students out to relax and to watch a movie because Rinpoche knew that people need to take a break and people need to unwind. Part of practicing kindness is also knowing when to rest and when to be kind to ourselves, when to set boundaries and say, I need to rest. All right. So that's it from me for this week. I hope that you guys have found this video useful and helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Once again, thank you very much for joining me for this week. And thank you again to our sponsors. As ever, please stay home, please stay safe, and don't go out if you don't have to. I'll see you guys in two weeks time on the first Sunday of next month. Have a great week ahead. And as ever, please don't forget to be kind to each other. Bye.